Hi, when the famous physicist and astronomer Galileo first championed the idea that the Earth revolved around the Sun back in the 1500s he was called a raging lunatic and convicted of heresy by the church he was then sentenced to life imprisonment and died under house arrest around nine years later but if a ten-year-old tells his science teacher that same fact today nobody would even bats an eyelash show what's changed. Lots of things the world has evolved, new technologies have been developed that helps us more accurately understand astronomy for example so poor old Galileo was not insane he was simply before his time luckily, scientists today have more advanced tools and gadgets that can help them avoid meeting the same fate as Galileo but sometimes, their claims still make us do a double take when we first hear about them especially if we don't have a background in science and physics let's look at an example, shall we? In their published works, Two different scientists, Tom Garrison and Michael Allaby both compare mountains to ships yes, you heard me right mountains, those tall massive structures that protrude out of the earth in such a stately solid way and ships, sailing in the open water sounds like an odd coupling, but the physical law of buoyancy developed by the Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes would say otherwise this is because the driving force behind both ships and mountains is one and the same and it's something called buoyancy now the words buoyant or floating don't usually pop into our heads when we think of mountains but guess what happens to a mountain? Mountain when a thick sheet of ice accumulates on its surface. The rock sinks into the mantle under its weight, just as a ship sinks deeper into the water when it is loaded with cargo, and what happens to the mountain when it erodes or after the removal of the thick sheet of ice from its surface? In much the same way as a ship rises again when the cargo is removed from it the earth's crust will rise again in response to the reduced load on the mountain we know all this today from the research conducted by scientists such as Garrison and Allaby in 2013 and 2014 but flashback 14 centuries ago to when the Quran was revealed and you will find that it too makes the same analogy in chapter 42, verse 32 when it says and among his signs are the ships in the sea like mountains. How in the world could a book reveal that long ago possibly contain such accurate scientific analogies in the glaring absence of the necessary scientific tools and proofs at that time? Yet, another example of modern science mirroring the Quran relates to the concept of inertia in 2011, in the 39th issue of the Thresholds Journal entitled Inertia One of the Articles, written by Dr. Caroline o. Fowler, who has a PhD in the Department of Art and Architecture from Princeton University, is entitled Standing Mountains Move Like Clouds and You Thought the Pairing of Mountains and Ships Was Bizarre. In this article, Dr. Fowler offers her reflections on inertia using the artwork of a famous painter called Ibrahim Blowy Mad. She begins by describing the concept of inertia, as defined by Sir Isaac Newton's first law of motion namely that a body will persist through force in a state of either rest or motion until moved by another body she then goes on to shower her praises on a painter for his ability to express this rather abstract concept of inertia with only the stroke of his paintbrush and a single picture in her conclusion. Dr. Fowler further draws attention to the fact that Blowy Matt moved towards an understanding of movement which is not about setting things into motion through a violent force but instead suggests the notion that the world may already be in movement and like the mountains that move like clouds. Movement and rest are two different but ontologically equal states it is impressive when art is able to depict scientific notions in a straightforward way but long before Blowy Matt, Newton or Galileo himself it was the Quran that presented the understanding of force and movement as a relational concept in chapter 27. Verse 88 of the Quran it reads, And you will see the mountains and think them solid, but they move like clouds it is God's technique which has established everything perfectly centuries ago. God told us that he created the world following the laws of inertia it is science that is just now catching up so who says science and religion have to be at odds in the Quran. Science and religion are twin sisters and I don't mean the type of twins that keep saying they're identical when everyone really knows they are fraternal. The Quran contains many passages that were not understood by scientists let alone regular people, until recently, and some that science still has not fully deciphered but this should come as no surprise. In fact, the Quran itself tells us that this will happen when it says and these similes we put forward for mankind but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. Let's look at that word a little closer now simile it's very fitting that the Quran should use that word seeing as how the book itself often uses similes and analogies to help explain things that might otherwise seem abstract or unrelated to us but what's even more astonishing then that is that modern scientists have used some of the exact same analogies that were first written in the Quran over 1400 years ago. Of course, until scientists studied any of this, no one thought to relate mountains and ships or mountains and clouds in this unusual way. And even now, the analogy of mountains being like ships in the sea and like moving clouds is one that will most likely be lost on many people try it for yourself if you like. Try telling a police officer that mountains move like clouds and watch what his reaction will be. But be careful, 
because if you persist in saying it he might just consider you drunk and arrest you. What can I say? Sometimes the truth hurts I think Galileo would agree with that, don't you?